Good evening a lot. Boker Tov in Milwaukee, where we know you're singing We Are the Champions this morning. We hope as you're waking up as champions, you could join us for a little bit of time. My name's Wayne Firestone. I'm the executive director of the America-Israel Friendship League. It is great to be with everyone here today to talk about a topic that we all need a little more literacy on. We have two amazing teachers uh, today to share with us, teach us a little bit what beyond the jargon social media is about, the new channels, the new apps that some of us have kids or grandkids that are using and others are beginning to uh, explore for ourselves. So before we start and I introduce these uh, uh, great two folks uh, to you, uh, why don't you put in the chat for those of you that are calling in live, why don't you tell us about your favorite social media channel or app? Uh, if you don't know what those things are, don't try to bluff. We'll give you enough by the end of this webinar that you'll be able to answer that question if you can't answer it now. But if you can answer that question now, let us know what you're using, what you play with. And um, I promise you by the end of this webinar today, you're gonna to have not only more uh, literacy uh, on this topic, but you're gonna be two individuals that are really uh, 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 earned the title of Maven. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about them. Um, I see Instagram, we're gonna hear about Instagram today, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, 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 we have people calling in from, uh, again, around the world. These apps and these channels are global. And so it doesn't really matter where you are, uh, uh, Tal, you're going to hear about in a moment, has worked and lived in different parts of the world. Jake, uh, despite his age, is usually on a plane. Uh, uh, so he appears in many different forms. I think he's actually in several places at once. I don't know exactly how he does that. Maybe he'll teach us some of the tricks today. Tal Navarro, she is the founder and CEO of Social Lady. It's a, a digital agency. She started in advertising in Israel with uh, the premier advertising firm in Israel, Adler, Chomsky, and Warshawski. She created a social media department for them. And in 2020, a year many of us just wanna forget, she was out there moving like a real social media maven and named one of the 100 top uh, influencing people by Izzy. Uh, if you don't know what Izzy is like me, then uh, you'll find out from Tal. But 2020 was a pretty good year, despite all the challenges for people who were digital natives, because there was a lot happening and we all had to um, essentially um, uh, improve our game uh, in order to be able to communi communicate in new ways. Jake Bajorset is the founder of Trendsetters. And uh, don't worry if there are a couple of vowels missing in the name of, of his company, it was intentional. He'll explain it to you uh, if he chooses. We know that Gen Z speaks a little differently, communicates a little differently, but that has not stopped Jake, if anything, in creating a, a, a self-described Gen Z-led agency uh, by a 21-year-old leader who is self-described as a living paradox. So I actually don't think it's such a paradox in that you have recognized that some of us, the fact that we don't get it is an opportunity. And to bridge that gap and to help generations uh, talk to one another in new ways, on new platforms, uh, is frankly not only an opportunity, but it's, there's a great need here. So that's our lineup for today. Uh, we've got some great presentations. You're gonna learn some tools. We're gonna start with Tal. Tal, uh, I know you're somewhere in Los Angeles now, and uh, uh, so it, it, it's early in the morning. Bring us some of that good karma from the West Coast. Hi, everyone. So good morning. It's uh, great to be here. Very exciting. I'm super happy to take part of this wonderful um, organization and event. Um, my name is Tal. As it was said before, I'm the owner of uh, Social Lady. We're a digital marketing agency, and I've been doing it for the past 15 years. I actually started on a Caribbean island, not in Israel, but much more before I wasn't even in Israel. Um, and uh, But what I'm going to do, uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you a short uh, video just to make the introduction more clear and see the journey that we have been through 
uh, that I have been through since uh, 2006 until today and all the obstacles and the things that we've been through and accomplished and, and happy to share it with you guys. Um, and we'll talk, we're going to dive into some tools on the social media platforms and uh, on digital marketing in general. There's so many things to learn out there. We have a limited time, so we're going to go over them and, um, and we're going to talk about it after the video. So I'm going to share the video uh, right now um, and let's go. Do you have a great product or a service that everyone needs? A winning idea for a business? That's great, but now what? How are you going to tell everyone about it? Where do you even start? Hi, my name is Tal. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Social Lady Digital Agency, and I'm here to help you succeed online. Uh, Tal, I don't think we're seeing it. I think you've got to maybe I, stop and, and, and do oh, the, you the don't share see? again. Yeah. So you don't, you don't see? Okay. We, don't, we hear it, but not see it. Oh, really? Okay. So let's try it again. Do you see it? Do you see it right now? There we go. You there, see my I, uh, okay. Great. Now we've got, we've yeah, got let's, your. Yeah. Let's redo it. No problem. Go. All right. So uh, let me get this back and start over. Thank you. Great. Do you have a great product or a service that everyone needs? A winning idea for a business? That's great, but now what? <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. It worked until. A How are you going ago. to tell everyone about it? Where do you? Okay, so what I'm going to do? It looks like the Zoom gods aren't behaving. Why don't we jump yeah, to? Can... Why don't we just uh, jump to the PowerPoint and then we can try later to run it on our. Okay, no problem. Sounds good. Um, so what we're going to talk today about, let me uh, share with you the PowerPoint, which is the, really what we're gathering here for. Um, all right. You guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. So today we're going to dive into a few marketing tools, okay? And we're, we're going to talk about, the video has been downloaded in the meantime, so we can show it right after. I don't, I'm not sure what happened. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I think it's, we, we organized it so much behind the scenes that something had to happen. You know, it, it, it didn't make sense that it will just go smoothly. Um, anyway, what I'm saying is that we're going to talk today about marketing tools for 2021. There are a lot of marketing tools out there, a lot of things that we can do when it comes to online world. You know, even if we are just uh, sell, even if we're just not selling anything online, or if, if we are selling something, if we are a brand or a product or a service that we have to provide, um, everything comes at the end of the day to the online world. Everything happens today online. There are millions and billion of people out there, you know, on the, there. you know, that today the 89% of the people are using social media platforms as well. And it's a really amazing, um, amazing to know that because our opportunities are so big and someone who is not understanding this world and is not taking part of that, he might lose a lot. So, Let's dive into a few tools um, and we'll, we'll talk about them briefly, okay? So first of all, marketing on Facebook. Facebook has been here, you know, many, many years since 2003 um, when it just opened up and it's, a, it's really a long journey and it, it had changed a lot as we, we are. And marketing on Facebook has also changed. In the past, I used to upload a post and it reached a million and a half people, but today there's a zero uh, zero exposure if you're not creating ads and paying money. So there are a lot of things we have to learn about uh, marketing on Facebook. And Facebook, you have to understand, has more than 2.8 billion people who are monthly active users on that platform. And that's the large, second largest advertising platform. So at the end of the day, Facebook is free, right? So their business model is basically to for you to click on ads, for you to go ahead and click on their advertisements. And what do they do? They create a lot of things that interesting you, a lot of interest in by the algorithm that works on Facebook. And that's what happens. You're going to see the things that you're interested in, the people you're interested with. And, um, and, and also on, you know, Insta uh, uh, Facebook bought Instagram, they bought WhatsApp, they got Messenger, 
So they bought a lot of tools and a lot of uh, communication tools under their wings, what ma- which made them being really the largest, at uh, the second largest advertising uh, platform and one of the largest communication tools that is out there. Um, let's go for a minute on uh, Instagram. So everyone, I don't know if everyone is using Instagram, but Instagram has become one of the strongest uh strongest marketing tools as of today. Instagram is a visual uh, platform who enable uh, enabling us to upload visuals, to upload videos, to upload pictures, um, to upload stories. There are a lot of functions on Instagram. I'm not going to dive into them right now, but it is an amazing tool for usage. And also Instagram as Facebook is a free app. And as a free app, We have to understand how it works. The, the way that it works is that Instagram wants you to click as much as possible on the advertisements as well. And therefore, they're going to do everything around it to make sure that you're staying at the longest as possible on Instagram. So if you know the Explore page, for example, my Explore page on 2019 looked like that. You know why? Because I was pregnant. And the only things I was watching around were babies' pictures, pregnant women' pictures. And that's what Instagram showed me. And that's how they make their revenue because I am staying longer on the app because I'm enjoying the content. And therefore, I have more chances to click on the advertisements that they, that they have. So they know everything about you. They know where you are, who you are you know, DMing, who you're sending messages, who you're tagging, what you're searching. They know everything about you, even what kind of... Uh, Wi-Fi uh, server you're using and what location you are, they know everything about everyone. And today on the digital world, you know, um, uh, Seth Godin said, marketing is no longer about the stuff you make, but it's about the stories you tell. You have to tell a story. It doesn't matter on what platform, on, in- on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Pinterest, any platform that you're using, you have to create a story. You have to personalize it. People are coming to see people, to get to know people. They're not coming just to get information. They can do it on Google. But they're coming to get inspired or educated or entertained. And when you are creating story, you make them feel. You can make them feel happy or sad or surprised or even anger. That's a good feeling to have because that's when they are going to react. And the more they're going to react on Instagram or on Facebook or on any platform, that's when they're really react. Your, the algorithm of those platforms is going to catch you and lift you up and benefit you and get you more exposure on those tools. So it's super important. I'll give you a few content creation tools so you can use it. And I hope you have a note and a pen, um, a notepad and a pen. And one of them is Later. Later enables us to organize, reorganize our content in advance on Instagram. Okay, I'm, I'm running because I know that my time is uh, very limited. We have Unum app, which is an amazing app to create uh, also like preview to create an organization inside Instagram before you upload it on Instagram. You have a few, uh, a few content creation uh, apps that enable you to really play with the content like Lightroom. You can play with a light, with a shapes, a, a, a Snapseed. I'm using Snapseed since many, many years now. It's an amazing tool, have a variety of options. For you to play with your content and canva if you guys don't know canva you better go and check it right now canva enables you to create everything you want you have posts you have banners you have uh, landing pages you have you can do presentations you can do everything with canva even if you don't know how to open a computer super easy to use a few clicks a few drag dra- drag and drop super easy to uh to navigate and use it mojo it's a stories app enable enable you to design your stories for your instagram And there are many more. I just threw a few tools for you guys so you can really uh, play with them and try them at home. We have LinkedIn account, LinkedIn uh, uh, platform. LinkedIn is an amazing tool that everyone today has to be. You have to understand that we are the brands today. It's not like we say, oh, um, you know, we're not selling anything. We shouldn't be online. Everyone needs, everyone is a brand. It's 2021. We all brands and we all have to be out there. And LinkedIn enables us to build our, pro, our professional profile, enables us to showcase what we did, who we are, to reach out to professional people from different industries, to create uh, articles, to create Q&As, to create polls, to engage and to find people who are doing what you do or to find customers, to find suppliers, to find um, in, if you are looking for investors, to find um, you know, people to work with and collaborate. And that's exactly the place where everyone 
should really be. And that's the way uh, the profile looks like. So again, I'm running because I don't want to um, um, stop on anything. Other platforms as well as YouTube, of course. YouTube is the second largest uh, search engine on, on the world today. So imagine when you're writing a keyword on Google, you sometimes see videos are coming up first. And those videos are optimized for Google, which means that you wrote, you wrote keywords inside them. There are so many things to talk about. You do, I'm not going to dive into that right now, so I can give the stage. Um, but it's super important to learn and know how to use link, uh, YouTube. Uh, for, if you have videos, if, you ha if you're a musician or a singer or, or you know, do-it-yourself kind of uh, ideas or tutorials and so many ideas that you can use with YouTube and you can always synchronize it with other platforms as well. So it's super important and super good for Google uh, if you want to be found on Google as well. Pinterest is another uh, visual platform, build of boards, super important for Google search as well. When you are uploading a post on Pinterest, you can be searched on Google, but you have to optimize the post with keywords, with tags, uh, with title. There's so many things that can be done. And every post has a link so people get more exposure to your links so this tool is an amazing tool pinterest is one of the really strongest tools that people are underestimating it sometimes and it's super important and relevant to learn and to know about it and last but not least clubhouse i don't know if you guys heard of clubhouse clubhouse is an audio um is an audio based social media app which enables us to create rooms on subjects and have a conversation uh, have different conversations with different people around uh, from all over the world about, about specific subjects. And what's strong in this clubhouse is that it's not, it's maybe the first really based, good, working good uh, audio, audio uh, app. But now there are a lot of audios that being developed, audio apps, I'm sorry. For example, um, Spotify created Green Room and Facebook created auto base uh, platform that people can create connections and have a conversation and the world is going towards the audio based apps and it's super important to get to know them and also it what it means that it's not anymore someone can upload your posts or do anything you know you have a team and someone can do it for you on the back but on on, the, on those kind of platforms you have to be in the front and speak and, and literally create that the, the connection on stage so these are the main really main key tools. There are a lot of other tools, email blast, blogging, um, uh, newsletters, um, landing pages. There are a lot of things we can talk about, but I, I'm, I've got limited of time as, as I was said before. Um, and always what I encourage you is really to learn those things, not just let someone do it for you, but try to learn it as much as possible and stay you know, on top of it. And if, if you want to promote anything, of course, online, and, um, and of course work, but, but if you really want to do it, you have to understand it's a full-time job. It's a lot of work to learn everything, obviously. So do work with someone else, but make sure you understand what's going on. And because this is our life, this is our present. It's not like the future. It's not like coming up. That's what's happening right now. And if you're not there, you're not really exist. So that will be my two cents. Uh, this is me. You're welcome to uh, visit the Instagram or our, our uh, website to learn more to get a lot of information and articles about social media, about growth, about anything that you want to learn about. Um, and that was me in, in, in uh, that was about social media tools. And I hope I helped. Maybe I'll try the video again. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll run it after Tal. Uh, okay. we'll, I want to talk about the Let's company go. a little bit. So we'll, we'll, we'll run it on ours. Cause oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Whatever. It'll run smoother. I think. Um, Jake, uh, uh, tell us about um, Gen Z. Should we be afraid, or, uh, or, or, or is there going to be an opportunity where we can actually have a real conversation with you? I mean, I realize it may not be on email, it may not even be on the phone. Gen Z seems to be creating your own uh, 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 way of, of 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 communicating, both the messenger and the message at times. And uh, when we first met uh, several months ago, I saw a, a video that you put together, which, which to me was one of the best, shortest explanations of both the gap and a sort of vision about how, how we may 
you know, try to address that gap. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things where we, we should certainly be fearful, but we should be fearful from a perspective of we should fear what we don't know. And that's very much the case when it comes to not only generational marketing, but the employer employee relationship, which is what we're seeing now in the market. Um, but, you know, what, what I saw when I was 18 years old and really got started into this, what I, what I saw a clear distinction between the understanding of executives of brands and those in the in leadership roles and, and in a power of decision making and their actual consumer bases. And that's the reason why I founded Trendsetters. And now today we have a team of 26, all between the age of 18 and our oldest, I think is 27. So we have some few kind of fringe millennials and we help Fortune 500 and, and venture back startup brands like McDonald's, L'Oreal, Coke, North Face and others ultimately understand first and then ultimately reach Gen Z through these platforms that we call social media. And the number one distinction is exactly that. It's Gen Z's perspective of social media is a lot different than the perspective of older generations. To us, this isn't something new or foreign. This isn't the internet. This isn't social media. This is our means of communication. We don't know a world without that. Um, you know, I was probably 10 years old when Facebook was first introduced. By the time I had a cell phone, there were already a plethora of social media channels. And how we communicate via Snapchat, via Instagram, via TikTok, via YouTube, how we consume, how we communicate, how we message one another. This is native to us and ultimately who we are um, as, as a consumer base. So um, can we maybe uh, uh, show this video now and, and, and have you give a little bit of an explanation of, of you know, th this seems to me a bit of your diagnosis of the challenge and I think could bring us on to the same page. And then we'll talk about, uh, uh, I'd love to hear and have you explain a little bit what you see working as a result of your insights. Here we go. It's not about who we are. It's about who we're not. We're not Kanye after the Kardashians. Our intellect is Andre times 3,000. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our My deepest, deepest fear, fear is that, that we are powerful beyond measure. measure. We're not a failed generation. We're a flourishing one. Not beholden to one belief because we won't allow ourselves to be boxed in. Our most fluent language is progress. We're not bound to our phones. We're bound to accepting the difference we see in others. Our real world experience developed in the social reality we built brick by brick online. Within disaster, we find beauty. We believe in justice. No, accountability for all. We believe tradition should never be a prison for someone else. We're naive because we've never told ourselves no. Technology has not made us detached. We're more connected than ever before. We didn't create the generational divide. We acknowledge it because there's work to do. We are next. Every time I watch that, Jake, my my my. I have a this reaction that comes from somewhere inside, like you know, wow. Um, and and uh, so, tell us a little bit about. Uh, somebody wrote into the chat already. This is tough, and I suspect that um, you're you're um, you're being very direct with us about a number of things that 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 you want us to understand about the generation. And as you said, that there that that we've got to be honest in 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 these conversations. Uh, to 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 get at. So tell me a little bit about how what what you all are doing and 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 what the the direction of the trends that 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 you see that you're trying to create. Yeah, for sure. You, you know, from from what we're doing, it's it's a combination of insights, strategy, and then ultimately deployment on the marketing execution side. 
Um, typically, that's a combination of social media, content development, influencer marketing, um, all of which we like to conduct in-house with our you know, incredible team of young uh, Gen Z marketers. And um, you know, in, in terms of some of the trends that we spot on social media, some of the things that stand out to me, obviously what we've seen in the past 18 months to 24 months with the TikTok platform is, is really... It's really staggering. Now, I know there's a lot of concern around TikTok. It's a very different platform in terms of the setup, the structure, the uh, the ability to actually get in and, and create content. It's not as native for, for certain individuals. But what we're seeing from that is, is something that we really haven't seen across any prior social media channel. Uh, if you go look at the Spotify and Apple Music top 100 songs, uh, the viral 100, 99% of those songs are going to be derived from TikTok. When you look at some new products and categories and apps and other things, it's, it's being fueled by this unique algorithm that is driven via the For You page on the platform, which is different from any other algorithm that we've seen. And so to me, that's the number one is, is, is how TikTok is utilized as a channel. And really what we see with TikTok, the, 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 really the first component component is the short form vertical video. So the way it's laid out on your phone, it's not horizontal where I need to flip my screen like this for YouTube or on Instagram, it's only taking up you know this percentage of my screen. It's taking up the entire screen on my phone. So it's very native to that and it's allowing for the most amount of consumption to take place. Um, the other is the usage of trends and audios and styles and how that can, can be displayed across not only TikTok, but it even weaves its way into ultimately culture. And for us, for, for Gen Z, what social media is and what the trends are on the channels, that, that is not a social media trend to us. That is a, a derivative of culture. It's a derivative of sentiment, no different than, than the music industry would have been you know, back in the day. And so I think um, to me, that's what stands out as the biggest trend. And I think additionally, as we think about the future of social media, a question that I'm asked often by CMOs and SVPs and more is the question of uh, around fragmentation. When is this going to stop? When, it, when, when are there going to be a finite amount of channels? When am I going to have to stop scaling out? Um, and the, the unfortunate but also fortunate reality is that social media, we're going to continue to see fragmentation. So, you know, maybe a, a few years ago, we had five primary channels. We had our Facebook, we had our Instagram, we had our Twitter, we had our YouTube, we had our Pinterest. We had Tumblr a little bit here and there, you know, and now maybe that's closer to eight to 10. Now we have Snapchat and TikTok added to the mix and many other smaller ones. Well, over the next few years, it's going to continue to follow Moore's law. And we're going to see that accelerate. Um, I think everyone's familiar with, with the whole parlor situation, which that was very politically derived um, and then obviously got shut down. But that's a very good example of how micro and fragmented social media can get, where it can be based around a very specific archetype and audience base. So even outside the political realm, I see it over the next decade, we're gonna see social media platforms pop up for people that are into Frisbee, people that are into environmentalism and sustainability and all these different styles and textures. And so I think it's vital now that brands and businesses they have a good grasp on their speed and agility to be able to enter into these new social channels because it is that speed and agility that will define your success in these channels for the foreseeable future. Wow, Jake, there are so many questions that your your trends um, are, are, are taking me to. Um, uh, let me just ask two, just real quick. Um, uh, first of all, as a Spotify user who listens to music normally that's, 30 or 40 years ago from my past, sounds like I'm, I'm in that 1%, not the 99% of, of where the music is coming from today. Did you say that 99% of, 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 of listeners to music is generated from TikTok now? So 99%, if you go look at the um, Spotify and Apple, both have a viral 100 playlist. It's the hottest songs on their platforms. 99% of those songs are songs that started on TikTok. It wasn't rolled out by a publisher. It wasn't rolled out by Warner Music or Universal. You know, I had the same conversation with Warner just a few months back, and that was the exact same conversation. Our distribution of music, which is really what, what we tend to see within culture and social, is like it gets pushed through music first, then fashion, 
then consumer products, and then it continues to weave its way into everything. So when, it, when I see its impact on the music industry, that tells me where this is all heading from a cultural perspective. And we've even seen it get to the point where we now have, we now live in an era, I want everyone to put this in perspective. We, we live in an era where a bunch of kids on a platform called Reddit can single-handedly shift and disrupt financial markets, get Robin Hood to have to shut down their platform because they can't lend enough money to back what's happening inside of Robin Hood and go after the biggest hedge funds and VC firms on the planet. And that's a great example of the, the, the collaboration and collectiveness of social media and the potential. Um, not even to mention the entire cryptocurrency industry, where one of the top 10 biggest cryptocurrencies from market capitalization standpoint right now, the underlying technology is piss poor. There's no even uh, developers still on staff with it. Yet Dogecoin is still one of the highest rated market caps. And why is that? Because it's funny. It was literally Doge was a meme on the internet that existed probably eight years ago, and it got revitalized into a cryptocurrency. And it gets to the point where Elon Musk is talking about it. One of the richest guys on the planet is talking about it on SNL. And that's either driving or dipping the, the price point. I had a buddy who literally picked me up in his brand new truck that was purchased 100% via Dogecoin. Well, how did he get that information at 21 years old? Of course, it's online. It's in social media. It's in Telegram. It's in Reddit and others. So this is not just a fun social media thing or impacting consumer, mar consumer markets or what, you know whether we buy Coke or Pepsi or whatever. This is even at the point where it's disrupting not only employer markets, but even financial markets. Wow, that again is, is really quite, a, um, quite an interesting uh, a development. Um, I want to uh, bring Tal into this conversation, talk about uh, her, her, her company, uh, uh, which is young, but involves, I think, a bridge, uh, a little bit of a bridge between uh, you know, an advertising agency that didn't have a social media uh, department brought them into the world of social. And now, uh, Tal, if I understand, you manage a team completely remotely and can be in different parts of the world, et cetera. Maybe we could um, go back and, and play the, the, uh, the video now from, from your agency. You can tell, share with us a little bit um, after about how you went through that, that, that evolution uh, with, with your own thinking and your own company. Do you want me to share it or are you going to share it? Do you want uh, me to do it? You guys want to do it? Well, Just I was a little bit concerned. Here we go. Well, we're, we're going to share it. Okay. Do you have a great product or a service that everyone needs? A winning idea for a business? That's great, but now what? How are you going to tell everyone about it? Where do you even start? Hi, my name is Tal. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Social Lady Digital Agency, and I'm here to help you succeed online. My journey didn't start in the digital world. I had my first company when I was only 21 years old, and there was no such thing as social media. I used to hand paper flyers, knocked on doors, and worked very hard to get clients. The lessons I've learned are part of my success today. After a few years of traveling the world, I ended up on a magical Caribbean island. There, I opened a new business, but found myself with a dream and a passion, and with no idea on how am I going to find my customers from an isolated island. So I started to look for answers and exploring the online world by myself. I've learned on the go and applied it to my own business. And it worked! The magic happened in front of my eyes. My business grew. I had thousands of people visiting my website and interacting with my brand. My sales rose to the point that I allowed myself traveling the world and do what I love. That's when I realized the power of the online world. It allowed me to turn my passion into a business. And that was my turning point. I decided I want to help people from all over the world to experience the same feelings as I did. Since then, I co-founded one of the first social media colleges in Israel. I've been teaching and consulting thousands of businesses on how to build their online presence. Together with my team, we help businesses 
talents, startups and organizations to reach their potential clients. We are part of their online growth, increasing sales and making their dreams come true. The online world is continuously changing and can be very overwhelming. But it's not a trend, it's here to stay. Don't let your doubts or fears stop you. Not sure where to start? Drop us a line or give us a call. We are here for you. So let's get started. Tal, that was great. Tell us, a, uh, you, you shared with us one of your, um, um, your, your meta tips that were about our stories and that these platforms are requiring each of us to figure out how we want to tell our stories, which is the right channel for us, et cetera. I, 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 I read that you actually have a, a fan base or followers that, that's approaching half a million people channels how did you how did you build that up and and to get to where you are today well so you know when first of all you know i I've, I've started i've started on all this in 2003 uh my first business was when i was 21 years old and you know in new york there was no internet no no nothing um and i guess i woke up with a passion and i really wanted i knew what i wanted to do and i was working from my stomach and i started to create content um before there was any, there was MySpace, right? MySpace was a 2004, was one of the first social media platforms. And I started to create content and I, long story short, I met someone online. I, I moved to a Caribbean island with him. Uh, well, he lived there and I, I went to see him and I fell in love. He became uh, my other my other ex-husband, but um, we opened uh, our business together over there and it was online kite surfing equipment and uh, dealership. and. We created it from scratches. And what I want to say is that, you know, I've been just building it for so long. And when you are consistent, so let me give you a few tips. So when someone is, um, when someone really wants to build himself online, okay, first of all, you have to be, to understand who you are, identify who you are, what you want to bring to the table, you know, what exactly is that you're serving. If, if it's you as a person or is it is a brand or is a company or anything that you're building. Um, and when you know what you're doing, when you know who you are, when you identify yourself and, how you are different from others, what's different you, what makes you special and unique, what's your unique proposition actually, what is your, your voice out of everyone else who is going to competition out there, you really need to understand who you're approaching to, who's that person, even try to create a persona, try to understand who's that, you, you know, one person that you're approaching, give it a name, give it age, give it a status, like uh, um, demographic statistics, uh, what's, what's his uh, psychological characteristics, what does he like to do in his free time or her free time, learn everything about the person you're approaching. And, and when you do that, you are, it will be easier to you to, for you to curve the message that you want to deliver. So a lot of people are, you know, in a position that well, they're very confused about what kind of content they should create and how do they really can gain uh, followers or people to enjoy their content and, and growth and everything. And I can tell you that being raw, being real, being authentic and being who you are, and even if you are selling a, a product or, the, or a service, still bringing you to the front or bringing a human being to the front, personalizing it, changes the whole game. I, am, I have people that have been following me since 2006 when I started to really share you know, my stories, my kitesurfing travel and uh, traveling the world and building the businesses and a lot of people went through with me so many stages in my life. For example, you know, when I opened that business about kite surfing and when I got divorced and when I had a, a family tragedy and when I moved back to Israel and when I established the first college in Israel for social media and how I met my current husband and how I have the baby. And, you know, every, so people are, have been part of my journey for a long time. And the way that I am building, you know, my brand as a person and also as my company is that I really share you know, whatever I want to share. Obviously, they, they don't know a lot of things about me. They just know the general things I want to share. But when you are creating a story, when you are giving someone a path, you're giving someone, by the way, it doesn't have to be a personal story. You can create a story around a, a brand, around a product, around a service, around uh, something that people can get inspired from, they can learn from, they can get value from, they can get entertained or educated. And it's super, super important. 
And sometimes you don't really have to be that personal. You can just bring value. That's the main thing on social media platforms. You have to really bring value and be consistent. So what happened is that I have started with MySpace. I've moved to a website that I built with coding. When I was learning coding, coding by myself online and and I'm learning graphic design and all this. And I created a website that became super successful in 2006 about, about kitesurfing and kitesurfing equipment while living the Caribbean islands for a few years and traveling the world. Um, and, um, and I started to really create more and more content on more platforms as well. So YouTube came to the world and then Twitter came to the world and then Facebook became very strong and the, he, he created the groups and the pages and he evolved and he grew and, um, and, and when I came back to Israel and I started to teach it, I started to create content on Instagram because Instagram came in and then more and more people saw it. And I even worked with um, outside of the online world uh, platforms as well, maybe in media or magazines. And those have also an online presence. And so try to create as much content as possible, but also a quality and re relevant to your audience content. And that's when people really will follow and, and being consistent. That's that's the main key. I mean, a lot of people just uploading once in a while or uploading something that is not related to what they're doing and try to be consistent on what you do, what you provide, the look and feel of your accounts, you know, the content that you create. And also be always on top of everything related to social media because the trends and the, the, the changes, it's all the time changing. Social media platforms and the, and the digital world in general, there are a lot of new tools, a lot of, a lot of new things like TikTok and, and Clubhouse and, and Instagram. And, and there are elder things that are still working like Reddit and, and you know, Snapchat. It's not that old Snapchat, but it's, it's those tools are all the time evolving and changing and growing. And TikTok has become crazy big. And, and, and now Instagram has the reels that are very strong and, and uh, they're, they're pushing more videos rather than, you know, uh, stills right now that they just declared it. Um, so those changes all the time affecting us as, as people and as you know, humanity and also on our, you know, on businesses, on people's, you know, work on people, people's financial condition. And everything is, everything is on the, uh, on the updates. You have to really stay up to date as much as possible, be consistent, create things that people can relate to, people can connect with. And it's okay to go and check out, you know, if you, if you are selling something, it's okay to go to check competition or inspirations, get ideas, get, get, you know, um, check out what works more, what works less and always analyze things. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all about really growing from, from um, it, really to take the first step. A lot of people just don't know how to start and not sure where to take the first step. And it's just about, you know, building this frustr um, uh, infrastructure, like the, the foundation, creating kind of a strategy, understanding who you are, what's your audience, what your competition are doing, and by that, starting creating content pillars, content ideas for your uh, different platforms and start implement them and just start doing. Don't wait for it to be perfect and don't wait for it to be uh, the best because it's never the best. Probably the beginning. If you saw my first videos, I think I deleted some of them. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. But I just started. You know, I created some videos with my, I had a terrible English at the time 10 years ago or even more. Um, and I, I spoke, you know, with a broken English and with a, with a funny hair and whatever. I looked like a kid, you know, I was very, very young, um, very young. I'm not that young anymore, but I was, I was kind of young and uh, I was like uh, 25 or 24. And, um, and yeah, but, but creating, creating content that really resonates with people, creating things that are relevant to your audience and, and also understand the platforms. It's super, super crucial. So well, those that together. It's this cool. is so interesting because each of you have uh, a, a different niche in this. Um, interesting that you both started your first companies at 21 and that you um, really have stayed true. Tal, uh, you, you are really helping us uh, uh, of a certain generation understand how to navigate some of the channels that are emerging now in a, in a way that I think um, is is it you know a a natural progression of what you've uh, uh, shown and this storytelling technique, Jake. I want to go back to TikTok because TikTok really uh, emerged. You know, we we blinked or something, and suddenly it has the kind of scale that you were describing before. I mean, I can remember watching. 
from my generation, the first episode of an MTV video. And that was shocking to us to see music delivered in uh, that fashion. But what you described with TikTok and what you apparently are describing to music industry uh, leaders is, is really a radically different um, uh, landscape for the future of, you, of how your generation will buy, you know, a Big Mac or, or will, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, choose their music, et cetera, et cetera. Tell us a little bit more about uh, TikTok and the direction that you see that taking Gen, Gen Z or Gen Z taking us. Yeah, and, and, and TikTok just passed uh, passed Facebook in early 2021 um, for the average time spent on platform uh, for monthly active users, close to almost an hour. And um, you know, now we're starting to see YouTube launching YouTube Shorts and Instagram launching U Instagram Reels and Snapchat launching Snapchat Spotlights and all these other platforms now launching their own variations and versions of short form vertical video content, which is where things are moving. Um, and the reason it's moving that way is because inherently it is short form video content in which we can consume the most amount of either information, um, education, or more than likely entertainment in the shortest amount of time. And when it comes down to it, it's that, 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 that very small attention span of not only young consumers, but of all consumers that are just blasted with different messaging, communication all day, whether it's text, email, any of their channels, Netflix, Hulu, you name it. And so that's kind of the style of content that we're going to see moving forward. And I think it's really vital now that whether personal brands, business, uh, and really importantly for, for, for bigger kind of blue chip brands is we really need to figure out what is that vertical video short form content strategy uh, because it's easy to lean into photo and design and long form scripted video. What's very difficult is how do we translate and connect with those that are the most popular across all social media channels, which isn't businesses or individuals. It's actually influencers. Um, it's the people who know how to quickly create and they know how to entertain and they know how to educate and inform and they know how to do so with the right style and methodology. And what we're seeing on TikTok is the production quality is no longer being with a 4K nice camera. It's right here with an iPhone. Um, and it's often the lower quality videos that actually get the most engagement. So how do brands and businesses translate into that? And it, it, it is a difficult transition point but it's one that everything's moving towards, moving towards more of this vertical video, the usage of UGC, AKA user generated content, meaning it's something you quickly just create on your own. Um, but that's kind of the, the, the trend and shift that we see. And now with other social channels following it, this is gonna be the primary style and format of content uh, for the kind of next three to five years, I would say. Until ultimately we get AR and VR in the mix, and then everything I'm talking about will shift again. Okay, so let me make sure I got all the uh, abbreviations. UGC is the trend, user-generated content. It's gonna be on multiple channels, so we need to look to who are the influencers who are going to be cross-channel communicating whatever their story, brand, or message is. It's, it's okay. already on multiple channels. Just so you understand. I mean, yeah, no, even even the the Canva app that you showed, Tal, um, you showed it for. Uh, yeah, it worked for all platforms. It, you could use it for all platforms now, right? Yeah. But so, I, I, if I can add to what Jack said, you know that um, today those pl um, you know it started with TikTok, it started with Snapchat, and and then TikTok came, you know, a little bit I think later, right, Jack? If I'm not mistaken. I think Snapchat was before TikTok, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, TikTok was bought by Musical.ly and everything. But anyway, never mind. But he might uh, have been in diapers. So, <laughs> but what I want to say is that um, today every platform pushes to video. I mean, LinkedIn, that you know, was always a professional uh, platform, and you had to only write articles and upload very important documents and talk about your professional and your experience and your clients suddenly enables you to bring up stories, to create videos, to share live videos, to do all those things that 
are much more lightly. But, and that's because, and also Instagram, for example, created the reels and the reels are a mimic, kind of a mimic to TikTok. And when it, what happened is that everyone understood the competition and the need, like Jack said, how important it is. And where, and this next three to five years, everything goes to videos on a vertical way and easy to create, you know, in two minutes. And, and that's why I think that um, it's super crucial to, for people to really be comfortable in front of a camera this day because there's, there's no other choice. There's no other choice anymore. I mean, reels have been pushed on Instagram. And not only that, Instagram now declared, they said, they came out and they said that they're going to push, push much more uh, short video forms rather than uh, stills. So that's uh, bad news for photographers. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop pushing stills, but they are going to push much more short video forms. And that's really becoming the future. And that and me as an old lady, I'm telling you that um, it's not that simple for people like uh, for people like even for people like me to just stand in front of a camera and do dancing and all that. It takes time, but you have to really be smart about it. You don't have to only do dance and silly things. You can educate, you can create a Q&A, you can create uh, so many things, you know, that that you can push out. So everyone has to be creative and think about his product or his service or his purpose on that social media platform and what these audience is and understand him and then create content that relevant to him and easy for him to create. Because if you're doing things that you're not enjoying, you're just going to be burned out and it's not going to work. So anyway, that would be my addition Jake, to what you said. Jake, I want to go back to the, the trend you referred to about the fragmentation. And um, there are some of us um, who... Uh, have, have been watching this trend over some time and are fearful precisely for what you described, that we could have channels where only people who do Frisbee are talking to one another, right? And we have watched what happens as the, the sort of atomization of people going into smaller and smaller bubbles. Do you see um, it, uh, it, it is someone going to figure their way around that about the challenge that that's creating? Are you seeing other countervailing forces that are bringing people together uh, through those differences as well? Yeah. I mean, I think the only long-term solution um, fragmentation is, is ultimately inevitable when it comes to the, the future of social media and, um, and I mean, I, I mean, the best example is you look at Facebook, which was created for college students, call it, you know, it was around a little bit before, but call it 10 years ago. So say 2011, 20, uh, 2011. Um, you know, at the time it was only college students. Now it like my grandma is going to spend more time on Facebook than I will ever touch Facebook. And that shift happens only within the period of a decade and yet has totally disrupted the, the entire, you know, optics of what we even perceive Facebook as certainly still a viable social channel, but not what it was back then. Um, so the fragmentation is going to continue. The only real solution is having a, a, a strategy where you're creating content and able to then post produce that and push that across a variety of different channels. Um, and, and so it has more to do with the strategy behind what's going out as opposed to the channels themselves, because the channels themselves will always change and there's going to be more and more always added. So it has more to do with what we do behind the scenes away from the channels and then how we tailor it to all those channels. And so I would say that that's what I would always advise is taking a step back from this thing we call social media, because the consumer at the end of the day doesn't perceive it as Instagram or TikTok or YouTube the way we do as marketers and those pushing it out. They just perceive it as a the media they're consuming and, um, you know, dissolve the barriers between those and instead look at it from a wider lens, I would say. Hmm. You know, this is a piece of trivia that will probably date both of you. The first uh, song, the first music video on, it, on uh, MTV, music television, was a song called Video Killed a Radio Star. Um, and it sounds like both of you um, referring to this trend of video content as being the, the, the dominant uh, direction that things are going. Um, what else is this trend going to kill? What, what, what do you see sort of dropping off uh, as a result of the power of this user-generated content in video form? 
I, I just want to, I, I think that it's not only the videos are, that are evolving and changing, but it's also the audio apps that are becoming super, super strong, you know, podcasting um, and um, all the audio, audio apps that are being created right now. I mean, I see what's going on in Clubhouse. I'm very active there and it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing app. And I got to really grow and com- collaborate with so many people that I, I don't get to meet or see on Instagram or on TikTok or anywhere else. You just scroll and see videos and suddenly you can create a collaboration and, and chat and, and connect directly with people. So that's something that is really growing. And I think it's going to uh, affect the whole market and the whole other channels as well. And it's every, I mean, Facebook creating now an audio platform, as I said, you know, um, uh, Spotify does, um, and it's it's just growing all the time. And I'm sure their clubhouse it's only w- the first one uh, that came out. So, I, so I, Jake, I, is is radio going to kill the video star now? <laughs> I don't know about that, but it certainly is uh, interesting to see the the entire kind of music connection with, with with content. It's something that I know we're spending a lot more time investing into the audio production side of things and seeing what, what can be done there. Um, brands are getting into it a lot more, creating their own custom audio tracks. We saw the McDonald's Travis Scott collaboration last year, and then they partnered with BTS, one of the biggest K-pop groups, uh, really the biggest group on the planet. If you look at just raw numbers. Um, but, but no, it is, uh, it is interesting for sure to see everything in the music category and how that's impacting social. Uh, podcasts, you think they're going to survive? Is that part of the the audio trend that 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 continues to grow? Yeah, I think um, podcasts inevitably. Um, there, there, there's always, you know, there's so many podcasts now, but I always think there's still room for more because you don't need a mass market audience base for a podcast because the way you own the the consumer in that format for a longer duration, um, you can monetize in really interesting and unique ways. Um, I think podcasts really media brands overall. Um, that's a category that's going to continue to grow. And now we're starting to see the acquisitions of a lot of media brands. You just saw Spotify, the Joe Rogan deal. Then they purchased a podcast called Call Her Daddy, which I don't think anyone in here will know. Maybe Tal is familiar with with that one. Um, the audience base for that is like 18 to 22 year old girls. So I'm very familiar and I've heard of it. Um, but you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in that entire media brand category. Well, um, this has been a tremendous amount of fun and in, informative. I want to give you each one minute, one bold prediction a year from now. If we're doing this uh, 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 webinar, um, where will you be physically and what will be changed in the landscape of social media a year from now, a prediction based on uh, some insight uh, 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 each of you has. Tal, where where will you be sitting, and where uh, what will be different about uh, the social media tools that you'll be uh, using and teaching about? First of all, I was born in New York. I raised. Oh, you hear me? Oh, yes. You yeah, hear me. yeah, yeah. First of all, I was born in New York. I raised in Israel and at 18, I started to travel. So I'm every year I'm somewhere else. So you, it's never predictable in my life. Um, I lived in so many places and every year is changing. Not every year. Now I'm a few years here, but you never know. So next year, you, know, you I never know. And I don't try to predict because my life is so act, so dynamic, you know. So I'm, I'm happy to be surprised and wake up every day to a new opportunity and new uh, things. Um, but probably going to be in LA because my hobby just opened a restaurant here. So at the end of the day, I have a feeling that we're going to be around for a while. Um, where the world is going, you know, in a year from now, a year is not very long from now. You told me 10 years from now, I would say, well, you know, but a year from now, I do think that videos, you know, are going to take over the world, the, the vertical one, the yeah, vertical one and, and uh, the easy to create one, the short, ver- short short videos and also the audio uh, is absolutely growing and uh, evolving. And also you never know, something new might come up. Clubhouse just came last year. I mean, it's 2020 and, and no one expected that. So you never know. Jake, a year from now, where, 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 where will you be sitting and what, what will you be listening to? <laughs> or, or, or what will be the channel you're engaged in the most? Likely Los Angeles or Manila 
um, which we're planning on, on getting kind of an office set up in the Manila, Philippines once post COVID and everything's a little bit more chill. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, I, I, I think a year from now, which contextually, like, like Tal said, isn't, isn't a whole lot of time, but, uh, for a 20 year old, that's like a, a serious chunk of the life you've spent on the planet. So it does feel like a long time. Um, I, I, I think the biggest thing is influencers who are starting to launch Addison Ray launching her own beauty line item beauty. We have Logan Paul fighting Floyd, Me- Floyd Mayweather, which is just ludicrous. Mr. Beast launching Mr. Beast burgers, utilizing cloud kitchens overnight. Um, we're going to see more influencers like Charlie D'Amelio. She has an incredible partnership with Dunkin' Donuts. She should be launching her own D2C coffee brand. And we're going to start to see more of that because influencers Brands will get sick of the spend that they're spending right now on social channels and with influencer marketing. They're going to get sick of it and they're going to try start trying to convert that audience to their own platform like Vans, uh, Vans six, Route 66 is a little online webinar that, or not webinar, but online digital channel they have. Um, but more influencers are going to be launching their own brands and you're going to see that social, what social media has created is a world where um, the, 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 the individual is also the producer of not only content, but, but, but product and brands. And, um, at that point, P and G Unilever, all the big brands in the world will be, you know, kind of in a rush to figure out how they best integrate with that and compete. Um, so that's my prediction for a year from now. Well, that's great. We'll come visit you in Manila and, uh, uh, Tal, wherever, uh, uh, you end up, hopefully we'll visit you at your husband's restaurant. Um, we, we heard a little bit about the menu beforehand. It sounded unbelievably uh, delightful. So best of luck, uh, uh, with, 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 with that new venture. We want to thank both of you for being so giving and, uh, um, and, uh, patient with the rest of us who are just learning. Uh, you were great teachers, and we're grateful for this opportunity. To your point, a year and a half ago, we were not in this business of webinars, and we've learned a lot. Um, but uh, uh, we've learned how to be in front of a camera. We've learned how uh, to uh, share and connect people uh, who are all over the world now. And so we're grateful for your participation uh, today, uh, this coming Sunday. We know where we'll be. We'll be in the Arava. We will be in the southern part of Israel on one of our virtual tours, one of our most popular in the series. We hope you'll all come and join us. Um, It's a lot more pleasant this time of year, maybe doing it, uh, at least some of it during the day um, uh, over Zoom. So we hope that you'll be with us. Everyone have a great week. Thanks again to our panelists. Hope everybody has a, a good and safe continuation of their summer. Thanks so much, Wayne.